This scenic driving tour highlights four heritage cemeteries while winding through the three cities and four rural townships of Waterloo Region. Featured prominently at the Trinity Anglican Cemetery and lovingly shaded by massive trees, the family burial site of Mita D. Cherry is adorned by a somber figure clutching a floral wreath while leaning into a supporting cross. Mita was the daughter of prominent mill owner John Cherry. She was not yet three when she died suddenly in 1888. Her demise was investigated by Ontario's first full-time criminal detective, John Wilson Murray, whose memoirs inspired the award-winning TV series, Murdoch Mysteries. The murder weapon was a small, unassuming box of chocolate drops, which arrived by mail. Upon inspection, Detective Murray spotted a small hole through which a white substance, later identified as strychnine, had been injected into the sweet treats. Similar packages were received by two other prominent families in Galt, but Mita D. Cherry was the only casualty. While he closed hundreds of high-profile cases in his storied career, the poisoning of Mita D. Cherry wasn't one of them, and it haunted Murray through his own final days. Nestled on five acres dotted with tall evergreens near what is now downtown Kitchener, the First Mennonite Church and Cemetery is the final resting ground of some of the region's most prominent pioneers. It's also the site of a sordid tale of body snatching. The cemetery offers a glimpse into the lives of Mennonite settlers who travel by Conestoga wagon from Pennsylvania to start new lives in Canada. The first church was built of logs in 1813, and the cemetery was formally established three years later. The cemetery includes the grave of Abraham Erb, generally considered the founder of Waterloo, where he purchased 900 acres of bush and settled in 1806. Other graveyard inhabitants include Joseph Schneider, whose house on Queen Street is now a museum, and Reverend Joseph Kramer, who founded the House of Friendship. Here, too, is Bishop Benjamin Eby, who founded the First Mennonite Church. What is now Kitchener, formerly Berlin, and firstly Eby Town was named for him. A minister, school teacher, farmer, author, and community leader, Eby was by all accounts a generous, kind, and gentle man. But not all early settlers were so. In July of 1859, six years after Bishop Eby's death at the age of 68, his five-year-old grandson, Edward, died in a tragic accident at a church picnic. Edward was buried on a hill near the church his grandfather founded. Three weeks later, his tiny body disappeared. Dr. Friedrich Christ and an accomplice snatched the boy's body as part of an ongoing venture to sell skeletal remains for anatomical teaching in medical schools. Christ had a penchant for drink and a loose tongue, and the two combined at a local tavern where he all but boasted of the deed. When confronted by authorities, Christ freely admitted to his crimes of stealing corpses and reducing them to skeletons for sale. While other bodies were discovered at his property, there is no record of how many. And it is not known if what remained of young Edward Eby was again buried in First Mennonite Cemetery as no gravestone for him exists today. Christ and his accomplice served just three months in jail. He remained in Berlin until leaving abruptly for the U.S. in 1866. Both of his wives died under suspicious circumstances. After the failure of his medical practice, he took a fatal dose of morphine and ended his life in 1875.
Rush's Cemetery in Wellesley is a typical pioneer cemetery with an atypical attraction. Established in 1852, the rural graveyard has been sought out by historians, linguists, and code crackers since the addition of its most infamous stone dubbed the Bean Puzzle. Worn by years of erosion from curious visitors making their own rubbings of the code, the Wellesley Historical Society replaced the stone in 1982. Named for the man who erected it, Samuel Bean, was born in Wilmot, 1838, and had brief careers as a teacher and doctor. The epitaph is a 225-character alphanumeric code marking the graves of not one but two of his wives. Henrietta Fury died in 1865 after seven months of marriage to Bean. He married Wellesley native Susanna Clegg in 1866. She died 10 months later. Opinions of Bean and his puzzle vary. He's lauded by some as a deep thinker with bad luck and good intentions. Others see the puzzle tombstone as a display of narcissism surrounding suspicious deaths at the hands of a shyster. The code was reportedly cracked in 1942 by the cemetery groundskeeper, but he refused to share the message. The first confirmed solve was in the 1970s by a 94-year-old resident who lived nearby. She shared her findings. In memoriam, Henrietta, first wife of S. Bean, M.D., who died 27th, Sep, 1865, aged 23 years, 2 months, and 17 days. And Susanna, his second wife, who died 27th, April, 1867, aged 26 years, 10 months, and 15 days. Two better wives a man never had. They were gifts from God, but are now in heaven. May God help me, S.B., to meet them there. After the deaths of his wives, Bean moved to the U.S., married a third time, and became an evangelist minister and later a fruit farmer in Florida. Your destination is on the right. Castle Kilbride is Wilmont Township's beloved jewel. The man who built the Grand Victorian home rests just two kilometers north into the countryside in the Fairmount Cemetery. James Livingston's family plot is easy to spot on the quaint grounds, with a hulking Celtic cross thrusting into the sky. An homage to his Scottish heritage and larger-than-life success as a magnate in flax and linseed. Castle Kilbride was built in 1877, and its extravagant 10,000-square-foot frame was adorned with the finest art, textiles, and furniture from the family's worldwide travels. Livingston died in 1920, and another two generations would inhabit the castle until the structure and its contents were sold at auction in 1988. The developer who purchased the home had a grand vision to restore it, but the work came to a standstill and the castle began to deteriorate. In 1993, the township of Wilmot purchased the property. Massive restoration efforts commenced to return the castle to its original glory, and it was later designated a National Historic Site. Many of the original artifacts sold at auction have been returned to the castle either by donation or through the work of local antique dealer Jim Miller. This includes the patriarch's original bed, if you fancy a supernatural encounter with Livingston, you're more likely to find it in his bedroom at the castle than at Fairmount Cemetery. The bed was donated by a patron of the auction, not in the spirit of restoration, but because, well, because of spirits and desperation. The buyers were reportedly eager for its removal after just a handful of sleepless nights in which the king of the castle lingered around their bedside. 